G'day guys, we've got an optimization question here today where we've got the cost per hour, C dollars, of operating a truck traveling at a constant speed of V kilometers per hour is modeled by this function here, where V is greater than zero. The truck has a speed limit of 80 kilometers an hour, so a maximum speed of 80 clicks. Use calculus to find the speed the truck should travel on for the hourly cost to be minimized. Find the minimum hourly cost. And we have to find the difference in the hourly cost if the truck were to be traveling at its posted speed limit. So we have to find the difference in hourly cost between the minimum cost and the cost that uh, it would you know, incur for driving at 80 kilometers an hour. So let's get straight to it. If we're going to do an optimization question or you know, a question where we have to minimize um, anything, cost, time, whatever, we have to first find the first derivative of this function. So let's go about doing that. So here we have C in terms of V. So what we're going to do is we're going to have C dash in terms of V. Okay, so here we've got the three, we're going to bring it down. We've got three V minus 20 all squared on 5,000. And for those of you who think the chain rule might apply to this, it would if there was a function other than a linear function here, because the derivative of the inside of this function is just 1. So, you know, chain rule is kind of arbitrary for this one. So then what we have is we're going to, that v is going to come up, because we're going to rewrite, let me just change color for a sec, we're going to rewrite this part here of the function as 400 v to the negative 1, just in case you're worried about um, where I'm going with this part of the derivative, which is going, the derivative of this is going to be negative 400 v to the negative 2, which is equal to negative 400 on v squared. Cool. So let me just get that bit in. So we have minus 400 on v squared. Okay, and at the minimum cost, so this will be minimum, the cost will be a minimum when c dash of v is equal to zero. Cool. So basically what we would do, if we're in an exam, what we're going to do is we're going to stick this into a calculator with uh, graphing capabilities, so, or, you know, solving functions. Because this question, I'm looking at it in, on the exam paper, is worth not very many marks. So basically what you would do here is we would type into the calculator, we would go 3 bracket v minus 20 all squared over 5,000 minus 400 over v squared equals 0. And then we're going to solve, ask the calculator to solve for v. Now we get two solutions back. We get v equals 40.27. And we get v is equal to negative 20.27. So, as you can probably tell, where we've got velocity has to be greater than zero, the truck isn't driving backwards. So this one here, we'll, we're not going to use it. So we're only going to have velocity is equal to 40.27. Okay, so in any minimization or maximization or let's just say optimization question what we then have to do is we have to um, confirm that this is a local minimum so what we then have to do is we have to work out the concavity of the graph when we um, at v equals 40.27 so what we then do is we're going to take the double derivative so this part here is just concavity So we take the double derivative, so let's figure out what the hell that is. So double derivative 
of c with respect to v is going to be equal to 2 times 3 is 6. v take 20 to raise the power of 1. Still over 5,000. And then we're going to take this up. Negative 400 times negative 2 is going to be positive 800. Drop the power, negative 3, so V cubed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in V equals 40.27 into this. So we're going to calculate on our calculators the double derivative of C at 40.27. And we are going to find that this is greater than zero. So what we can say from this is if the double derivative is greater than zero, we have a concave up. The function is concave up. So if it's concave up and we have a um, point where the der first derivative of zero is zero, then we yes, it is going to be a local minimum. So it's asking us to find um, the minimum, which is 40.27 kilometres an hour. And then we have to find what the actual minimum hourly cost is. So from here, we then go, well, what is C of 40.27? So we sub that into this equation. We sub 40.27 in and we get... $211.60 and that's per hour. Cool. So that's the answer to part A. Part B, find the difference in hourly cost if the truck were to be travelling at its posted speed limit. Now this is only worth two marks so it isn't going to be too complicated. What we're going to do is we're just going to find what the cost is at the speed limit, which is 80. So we're just going to go, this was B. C at 80 is equal to, we just substitute 80 into our original formula. 248.20. And then we just, to find the difference, this is going to be, so the difference, It's going to be C at 80, subtract C at 40.27, and that's going to be 36.60. Cool. So, that is our answer for the first one. Along with that, and that is our answer for the part B. All right, so I'm going through this relatively fast. Now, the reason for that is, is because I kind of want to show you guys what the thought process would have to be in an exam. So, thought process in this question is we have a function and it's asking us to minimize the cost. So, minimize this function on the domain V is greater than zero. So what we have to do, if we think minimize, maximize, this is an optimization question. And as a result, we have to use So that has got to be what you think of when you see a question where it, like this, where it's asking you to find the minimum area, the minimum time, the maximum displacement, all of these kind of things. We have to instantly use calculus. You look using calculus to find a turning point. So what you're looking for is you're looking for when, like, um, usually when dy dx is equal to zero. So what we then have to do is we then have to confirm that it's actually a minimum because if it's dy dx is equal to zero, we could either have one that looks like this, or one that looks like this, or one that looks like this, and we're in the middle. 
So we have to confirm that it is indeed a minimum, a maximum, or a point of inflection, whatever we're looking for. So to do that, we look for concavity, which is what we did in the second part of this problem. So to get concavity, we take the double derivative, and we make sure if it's a minimum, it has to be concave up, so it has to be greater than zero. A maximum would have to be concave down or less than zero, and a point of inflection would have to be equal to zero. So once we've done that, we can confirm that yes, it is indeed what we're looking for, and then we can just pump out the solution. The second part of this question was not a very complicated part. I'm fairly sure any sort of 12 or 13 year old could solve what the difference in cost is. So basically, these ones get the first derivative, set it equal to zero to find the turning point, find what the turning point actually is, Use your second, your double derivative to find the concavity at the turning point to confirm that it is indeed what you're looking for, and then pump out your answer once you've confirmed it. So, yes, I've worked through this one relatively fast, guys. You know, made no apologies for that. I'm trying to get like a exam style question with exam style thought processes involved. So, I hope it helped. If it did, give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos like this all the time. Um, yeah, and if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to send me a message, um, and I'll do my best to have a go at them. But until next time, guys.